What is up, Rad Potential YouTube, and welcome to the moment we've all been waiting for with the Green Machine Cheap RX-8, seeing how much compression this tired RX-8 has. So, for those of you who don't know anything about this car, it's a 2004 Mazda RX-8. It's had an engine swap done with another engine. This engine that's in here has maybe 110,000 miles on it, I think. The car has like 150,000 miles on it. And it's very slow. So now that we're ready to compression test this car, you can see the current condition the car is in. I've got the car jacked up. Went ahead and took the passenger wheel off. You might ask, why do you take the passenger wheel off? Well, the passenger wheel gives you the easiest access to the spark plugs. And once you have the easiest access to the spark plugs, you can gather the necessary tools in order to remove them. Now, you might say, what the heck? You're not at a Mazda dealership. Well, we very well could be a Mazda dealership, Ma modern Mazda dealership around here because we have a bunch of Mazda cars of varying different, you know, i.e. we do Mazdas. Anyways, how are you going to do a compression test by yourself? The ultimate question. Well, this right here is a little device called the rotary compression tester. You read that right there. Now, this thing is available to anybody to buy. Um, We've had this one for probably, I don't know, Charles Johnny bought it maybe three, four years ago, I think. But uh, great little device. Awesome support for these as well. We've broken one of the, uh, the sensors and had to get it replaced, but that's not why you're here. Awesome product, not sponsored, but a great thing to have in your shop if you build rotary engines. If you just own a rotary engine car, find a friend that has one to be able to check yours. So anyways, we're gonna use this little device to check the compression of the car. This is the sensor that we're gonna install in place of the spark plug. So down under here, which you can see, or already saw, we have access to the side of our engine. Notice this one's actually pretty clean because I pressure washed it. There might actually be a little plastic panel right here um, covering up this brake fitting so go ahead and remove that um, to be able to get in here a little bit better. You're going to need a 1316 spark plug wrench. Go ahead and get in there. Pop both of those spark plugs out. Um, I prefer to kind of just go ahead. I guess you just need to take one out at a time. Why don't we read the directions? See what's up. Okay. The directions. Warm the engine to operating temperature. This is where I'm going to give you guys a solid here. Okay, you're going to be able to see the difference between a cold and a hot compression test. Right now, the engine is cold. We're going to compression test it cold, and then I'm going to fire this up, let it warm up, and we're going to compression test it hot, much to my hands, which I'm going to burn to dismay. So disable vehicle's ignition and fuel system. We're just going to unplug the ECU fuse. Screw, um, remove all trailing spark plugs. Screw the RCT. The 5.2 sensor into the plug hole. Trailing plugs. So I was going to say, I'm pretty sure I remembered I pulled both plugs out the last time I did this. That helps it crank over faster. Um, and basically, your cranking speed does affect the compression, but um, this does a correction factor in here. And uh, the correction factor is based off that cranking speed. So if your car does crank slower, the tester will account for that in some way, shape, or form. If you imagine having a, um, it's just like the hammer contest at the uh, at the fairgrounds or your state fair. If you go and you have a strong guy that hits the hammer versus a weak guy that hits the hammer, you want to try to normalize that difference. So if you have a strong starter or a weak starter, i.e., there you go. So we're going to go ahead and pop all these out of here and get this thing cracked up. Woo. Well, dose of pretty wore out spark plugs. Okay, so now that we have all that apart, you take your sensor, go ahead and thread it in by hand. You don't have to tighten it super tight because you obviously want to be able to get it back out. Oh, come on. All right, guys, so since we need to turn off the uh, engine stuff, we're going to go ahead and pull the fuel pump fuse, which is that one. Right here, fuel pump right under stop. And I've got all of the uh, 
spark plug wires disconnected. So with all that stuff disconnected, the car should not start and it should not put any fuel into the thing. And you might see some little arcs come out of the spark plugs down there, but Okay, so once you get the car ready so it won't fire up whenever you try to uh, compression test your car, go ahead, follow the directions on the screen, and crank the car. Oh, baby. Here's what we got. It's not looking too good, but we're not looking too bad. We've got 85, 82, and 80. And those are cold numbers. Okay, the front rotor, cold. Oof. Oh! Ah. There's a cicada in my car. Okay, well, we now have front rotor numbers. 68, 65, 64. Not very good, not very good. Not entirely stoked about that. As you can see the RPM is still 246, so we know it wasn't cranking slow. And that's not healthy. Okay, on to the hot startness. Dude, there's a massive cicada under my seat right now. Just saying. So hopefully those don't smell because it's definitely gonna die in here. So, plugs back in. I'm gonna heat the motor up. I'm gonna burn my hands testing this thing warm for you, which is what you should do in the first place. A warm compression test is gonna give you a much lower number because as the engine heats up, the springs get softer, which means that they can't hold the apex seal out as hard thus lower compression. So we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna do that so you guys can see the variation. We know what the numbers were before. We will now know what the numbers are after. My dudes, now that we've got this thing super hot, we're gonna go ahead, shut it off. There's that giant cicada. I wasn't lying. Can you see it right there, right there, right there, right there? We need that thing out of here. I'm not dealing with that. No shot. Oh, what the? Do cicadas bite? Do we know that? Can this thing like eat me? <laughs> See? I wasn't lying, y'all. There was a big cicada that flew in there. It's trying to eat me alive. Okay. Hot compression. Rear rotor. How ruined is it really? Take your best guess, I'm saying 77. Oh, 83 is across the board, 81. Not that bad, but definitely lower than it was cold. Okay guys, we've got front rotor hot. Sixty-eight, sixty-three, sixty-one. Man, that's no bueno. Okay, so let me get out of the car. We'll close this video out because y'all don't need to see me put it back together and move it out. Okay, so basically, this thing's low compression. Um, I didn't quite expect it to be as bad as it is on the front rotor. I was really hoping for, I guess, just somewhere in the 80s all the way around. Be like mid to low 80s would be fine enough for me. Based on my experience around the cars with how long it takes to start and this, that, and the other, that's kind of where I guesstimated it would be. So what does this mean for the future of this car? Well, I can tell you right now that I am not going to be rebuilding the engine like this week. 
or next week or probably next month or the month after. I do really want to take this car to a track day at Barber in November. Um, one, because it won't overheat because it's cold, but two, because I want to get it out on track. I want to use it. That's what we bought it for. So it does suck that the engine is hurt, but I don't think I'm going to hurt it any worse necessarily driving it. I still have the misfire issue to deal with. However, if I'm going to take the engine out to fix the oil leaks, I'm probably going to rebuild the engine. And that means, too, that then this car is going to be down for a while, and I don't like that because right now it moves. So anyways, I don't know. I still have some stuff to decide to do with the car. Comment below what you think I should do. I definitely want to be able to drive it a little bit more this year. I definitely don't have the cash right now to just shell out to buy another engine that works. Um, so we're going to have to be fixing this one, you know, doing apex seals, having the housing surfaced if they're even good, and seeing what's up. We still have work to do on the rally car. I've got my list of graphics sent off. She's making my graphics. So pretty stoked for that. And uh, yeah, there's just a lot going on. And the next thing. Okay, so conclusions on the RX-8, comment below. We compression tested it. It's not very good. The next big thing. Things to inform you guys about. Okay, so I have set up a Patreon account for the Rad Potential YouTube. I've had people commenting, messaging, asking how they can support the channel. Currently, I don't offer any sort of merch or anything for sale, um, which is something I'm working on as well, trying to get a website up. But what the Patreon thing does is allow me to do two things. One, it allows you guys to support the channel, um, get access to just, I guess, Patreon exclusive content. I'll, I'll definitely post things on there that don't get posted to YouTube. But the second part, and this is what I want to entice you guys with to join the Patreon, because this is something that I wish I could do better through YouTube, but I can't, okay, because commenting's hard, and it doesn't make sense for me to answer all your questions in, like, one YouTube video, because it's just, it's hard. So, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. Let me know what you think. Go over to the Patreon and check it out. On Patreon, I have a tier on there that you can subscribe to, and what that will allow me to do, and you guys to do, is you guys can post questions in there about your cars, about your builds, about whatever, things that you have issues with. Maybe your car doesn't run. Maybe you want to ask me a question about it. Post your question in there. And what I will do, because that avenue is easier for me to talk to individuals, because there's probably going to be much less people on Patreon than the YouTube channel, is that I can answer those questions in a video. So if you have a problem where, say, like your your Holly Bridgeport, whatever, whatever, or your Holly Bridgeport, your 12A Bridgeport with a Holly carb is stumbling really bad from here and there and there. Well, then I can take that question and I can elaborate on that question in a nice video. Spend 5, 10, 15 minutes explaining um, how I think or how I should, how I would recommend going about fixing the issue. I can upload that video on Patreon. You guys that subscribe there, that ask the question, get to see the video and it all works out. Um, because it's hard for me, like I'd love to be able to answer your questions. It's hard for me to like post a video that just answers five people's questions to the channel, to this channel. You know what I mean? We have more viewers than just five people. So it's kind of want to tailor these videos to, to everybody. So comment below if you think that's, that's something that's worth doing. I am also going to Patreon does a, <clears throat> like a third party drop ship merch style thing. So if you guys are members of the Patreon, once I set up the merch stuff stuff on Patreon, the people who are on there can buy t-shirts and hats and stuff like that. So Keep that in mind as well. Another benefit to uh, to joining the Patreon. And the Patreon thing, you can join it for one month and then quit. You know, So join it, ask your question, I'll answer your question, and then you can quit being a member on Patreon. So that's the way that I think that uh, can help me get things going around here, and you guys can help support the channel. I already said it needs a new engine. Um, but uh, with that, I'm going to leave you off there. So with that, guys, thank you very much for watching. We will see you guys in the next one, and uh, say a prayer for the RX-8 engine, because we need to get healthy quick. So, thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Keep it rad. What are you doing? Hey, come here. What are you doing? What are you doing? Peace.